first mind map on the topic of summertime. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the key simple features of MindMuff 2.0 for Google Drive and also talk a little bit about why we're going to use this for teaching, learning, and even for ourselves. So in a brainstorming activity, I'm going to first want to data dump all the information onto the screen. So in MindMuff, I'm going to click on my first MindMuff and I can click this little button up here to insert a child note or a subtopic. And the first thing I think of is gardening. I want to garden. But already I'm finding that too long of a way to add nodes. So I'm going to click back on the center and I'm going to hit the tab key and that will create a new node. Okay, so I also want to travel. And if I think I'm going to again click back on here and I where do I want to travel? Oh, maybe the Poconos. And here I want to more quickly add nodes. So I'm going to hit the enter key. The first time we'll get rid of the cursor. And the second time we'll add the new bubble at that same kind of level as Poconos. Going to go to the beach. Um, enter, enter. I'm going to want to read. Uh, and here I would ask people in the group, so what do you want to do? What, what do you want to accomplish? What are your goals? Um, so there's there are a few things and that might come up. Now, let's see what we've got here. Well, I see that I wanted to travel and I've seen that I've got a few places that I want to travel. So already we're using critical thinking to connect wh where, how we're going to group this information. So I'd like to go to the Pocono. So with MindMup, it's so easy to group. So now we're creating a, uh, 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 a main topic, subtopic, detail type of, a, type of a web or type of a tree. Okay, another place I'd like to travel, the beach. So students will be prompted, well, where would you put beach? Where would beach go? Okay, go and travel. Okay, well, all of a sudden, I'm no longer thinking about travel. I'm thinking about, well, travel has a few things in it. So what's balanced? What's not balanced about our web? Well, let's think about what we want to garden. So all, this, all of a sudden, the web, the visual representation is actually prompting new thinking, new creation. So garden, oh, well, I know I, I need to plant some uh, deer, deer resistant plants. And um, I also need to take out some invasives. Remember, enter, enter. That's creating that new bubble at the same level as where you were. I'm going to go uh, remove um, some invasives. So when I say at the same level, my first mind map, my first mind map is the main topic. Garden is the subtopic. Deer resistant is the detail. My first is the main topic. Travel is the subtech topic. Poconos is the detail. So already we're creating a visual outline. You were, and this is really a beautiful example of critical thinking. Um, as far as reading, well, um, I can't think of any books, but I can think of a few authors. Uh, so I want to get that bubble out to the side. Now, I could just, just hit enter and have a new bubble and I could go am Holmes and uh, and then I could then drag that over to the reading you notice when you drag a bubble again it's thinking about how we're going to group things so this is critical thinking this is thinking about how our idea fits together um, or I can just use from reading I can use the tab key I could theoretically also use the button over here to create a child node, but I think tab is so much faster. Um, so I'm going to add the author, Don, um, want Don Winslow, who writes some pretty fun books to read. So there we go. This is our first mind map. We've used the features of tab and enter and the visual organization of main topic, subtopic detail to create a really cohesive idea. Now, to take this even a tiny step further, let's add some visual ways to differentiate this. So for travel, I'm going to click on the travel node and go up to my paint bucket. I'm going to change the background color to, to pink because I'm really excited about that travel. Now, for gardening, I think I'll choose green. Wasn't expecting that, but no problem. We'll just click away, garden, and click on the paint bucket tool. The background, of course, our garden will be green. I think the text looks a little dark if the example of the background green and the text being gray would be my choice. So I'm gonna click on text 
and I'm going to change the text color now to uh, a light yellow. It looks a little easier to read, thinking about that legibility. And things that I want to read, I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to change that because I don't have another one. And I'm going to change that to purple. Oh, geez. You know what? Reality strikes. I think I need to add a few more information. I realize that I've got to do a little bit of work. And I'm going to hit the tab key, work. I know I need to work at the ES, uh, ESY a little bit. And, uh, and I also need to also um, do a little prep for the fall because that's what teachers do. Uh, so I'm going to change my background color there to something I haven't used yet, maybe um, turquoise and okay. So here is my beginning mind map. And I think what's important is that you've got the ability to organize things logically, critical think. Every time a new idea is, is spawned, that is an example of creative thinking. That is owner, that is user owned content. So really we're putting the activity of learning into the, into the hands of the student. So for these reasons, the ease of visually displaying and organizing your idea and the critical thinking that's involved, this is a great tool and a great strategy for, uh, for the classroom or really for life.